Hey, 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 welcome to the 2022 <laughs> Collision Hub World Fair. Yes. I am so glad to see y'all. I'll be right back. I'm going to go get a corn dog because no, it's no, no. there. <laughs> oh, well, I do have funnel trucks, food trucks, everything in the parking lot. That's the part of the show that nobody sees. And you said the band will be here later. The band's here yes. later. Okay. Yeah, okay. we picked one out for you. Now, uh, Mark, since we've seen you last, I don't. you had a, like a big life event. I got married. Got married. Finally. I know. Finally got married, and then I got COVID. Yeah. And then I got past that, and here we are. So when you get married, you get COVID? No. Is no, that, no, is I, that like a side I, effect? I, I, don't, I don't think those are related. <laughs> I, I, I'm pretty sure I'm they're not sure, related. Yeah, I'm sure it's not. <laughs> awesome. Well, congratulations. Well, thank you. Thank and, you. And uh, we're going we're gonna to kick you this world fair. You watched it live. I did watch it live. Yeah. In fact, I was like, because we couldn't. We couldn't get out there, yes. you know, with timing and everything. And yeah. I was like, you are to stream the wedding so that all of us that couldn't travel. I yeah. saw it, but I wasn't allowed to comment. <laughs> we had you turned off. I, I don't know why. Yep, yep. You know, the priest says, um, does anyone feel this wedding shouldn't go on? Let them speak now and forever hold their peace. And I'm, I, I'm typing and I'm, I'm hitting the button and, and nothing was coming nothing. back. Nobody ever passed the mic to you. Uh, no, my friends were actually saying to me, what are you yelling at your phone for? Yeah. Well, we tried to warn Spring, but she married <laughs> you anyway. Yeah, I know. I know. Yeah. Uh, well, and here's the thing. I, I don't tell her I'm way out of my league. Yeah. No, you married up, dude. I will. Yeah. Let me tell you. Yeah. So congratulations, Spring. I know you're watching yeah. from the beautiful West Coast. Is it beautiful now or is it? Well, it's probably raining, but. Okay. But, you know, it's, it, oh, it's shocker. okay. because right, Yeah, sh shocker. <laughs> well, you know, here's the stupid thing. It, we had six inches of snow last week in the middle of April. That never happens. So oh, some about climate warming. change. And people well, live there intentionally? Yeah. yeah. People, global yeah, warming. Okay. And my ducks were pissed off. All right. <laughs> well, welcome to Arkansas. Yeah, exactly. All right. Well, the first thing that we're going to kick off the fair and talk Did about. Did you get married? No. no. Okay. Just check. No. no. <laughs> His Amex black card is safe. No. Okay. Good. No. no, I'm not doing that. I it don't is. It is good to be back in Arkansas. <laughs> yeah. Right. Welcome back to the fun. To the yeah. fun. The fun fair. I Ooh. enjoy. I enjoy leaving the house anytime I feel like it without asking permission. Let's change it. The Collision Hub Fun Fair. There you go. All Although right. I do have my two living little Mexicans. Yep. My two little Chihuahuas. That, you know, will complain when I leave. But they don't have any concept of time. So I can walk out and throw out the garbage and think I'm gone for weeks. I know. So it doesn't matter. <laughs> They're always happy to see you. <laughs> yes, they are. Unlike most of the industry. <laughs> hey. um, <laughs> awesome. All right, so let's kick this off and talk about total losses. So it's a hot topic in the industry right now. Um, and part of that reason is total losses are on the uptick. Mm -hmm. So higher percentage of claims being reported are coming back as total losses. But the other thing on the uptick is that total losses are costing more. So not just yep. the ACV of the vehicle, but fees, storage, all of these things that a disruption in claim flow is causing. So the average total loss right now is taking a little over 35 days to mm -hmm. settle. I think it's probably longer than that if we're all honest with each other. Uh, but that means a lot of money. Mm -hmm. um, so about 42% of claims payments, according to yep. the claims, uh, the claims people. Um, so 42% of claims payments were going to total losses. And that's a that's a skewed figure. Yep. So it's, it's a it's, changing number. I think it's been a, a, a big issue versus pre-COVID, let's say, two years ago, that you'd be able to call somebody and talk to somebody right away. Mm -hmm. And it would kind of get settled pretty quickly. And then some people left yep. and some companies fired people and other people says, oh, we're going to go more remote. And I think this disconnect has caused these ridiculously long times and I'm talking not just something that you think is going to be a total I'm talking like an obvious total loss it's a mm -hmm. five-year-old car that somebody still had full coverage on and like the suspension the front suspension is in, in the trunk in so the back well. seat yeah. yeah you know and it's like okay why is this taking so long you know? well staffing issues and training yeah. issues always cost us money whether that's on the shop side or in the insurance side they're always going to cost somebody money and quite honestly they'll cost both sides money in this case specifically because as repairers um, we're not real good with paperwork and documentation right. and, and crossing our T's and dotting our I's and doing all the stuff that we need to do to ensure payment. Now, there's a little bit of a myth that you know, as long as I hold possession of the vehicle, I can charge whatever I want to charge and they're going to have to pay to get it out of here. Um, but there's some recent court cases. Yes. Um, some of these verdicts are starting to change. And so it's real important. The difference between winning and losing really comes down to your paperwork. So we're going to go over the process. So once well, you've a couple been, other, let me throw one more nope. factor in there. And the other factor is, is that the, the insured, let's just say an insured level, they have a duty to mitigate. Mm -hmm. And so when they say, Hey, we want to move it to our facility and you, and then, and, and then the shop wants to hold it until everything's settled. They're like, well, you didn't mitigate. And all of a sudden now the customer comes back yeah. and this is where the paperwork's going to come in here. Yeah. Well, ultimately the cost the, the, the customer slash the insured of the claimant 
is ultimately responsible for all the payments. Yes. Right. You know, the, the insurance company is reimbursing that person. This is where everyone gets lost on this. I'm yeah. going after the insurance company. You can't no. legally go after them. Yeah. You have to go after the guy who owns the car, the, excuse me, not the guy, the person who owns the car, you know, the insured, or the claimant in some cases where mm -hmm. the at fault and you know insured says yeah I did hit that person and the insurance company accepts yeah. liability on it. That's where these people get that disconnect. Yeah. And, don't understand. and we it's do. It's pretty simple. Who signed the paperwork? Yeah. Right. That's pretty now simple. we'll go into detail on a lot of that in the total loss classes. So if you haven't attended one of our total loss classes, we've got one coming up in Fort Worth, Texas, one in Denver, Colorado. Yes. And then we will also in June, so before Denver, uh, be teaching total loss at the Southeast Trade Show. Yep. So the yes. three of us will all be yep. together again. Yep. Um, in South Carolina, so you've got I chances mean, classes coming to too in that. see. Well, I don't know. I'm kind of done. I'm kind of done. No, oh, South Carolina. No, no, we, we do. Have, yeah, we we do. Have other I have a class called "Shut Up," <laughs> and and so that that's literally the name of the class, and I think it's I think it's full. So I don't I don't know about that one, but jo uh, Josh Kent, if you were oh, out there watching up. this morning, tell us. <laughs> shut up. I figured it was a great title. People would sign up for that. Are class, we gonna have right? shirts that say "Shut Up"? Uh huh. So no one's going to be able to ask Just questions you, in that class. You get one oh. class. So you get one shirt that says shut up. So let's talk about the, the release process. Now, like I said, we cover all of kind of the laws um, and, and the things you need to know about total losses to get to this part in the total loss class. But we're going to skip to the ending today because I'm finding that total loss release is something that I haven't found a shop kind of doing it Very well. completely yeah. or right the right way. So as soon as I know a vehicle's been deemed a total loss, that an insurer mm -hmm. has called me and told me the vehicle's a total or the customer calls me and says, hey, my insurer just called me and told me that my vehicle's a total. I have to start putting some pieces together very quickly. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to talk about and I want to look at what are all the customer signed forms? Do mm -hmm. I have all the signatures that I need? So sometimes these things move fast mm -hmm. um, and sometimes they crawl really slowly. But when we get a vehicle that's brought to us from a third party tow, in other words, the customer doesn't drive it in and leave us the keys, not all of us do a really good job of getting all our forms. So once I've been notified that vehicle's a total, I want to make sure that my repair contract has been signed. Now, this isn't an authorization to repair or a direction to pay. I want to make sure that I had the customer's signature on the repair contract. So it's probably going to be a couple pages long. Yep. It's going to cover what the duties are of the owner of the vehicle and what the duties are of you as a shop, as well as cover what fees may be applicable. So you're telling me that that paragraph that you one signature that covers everything is probably not sufficient? <laughs> it doesn't cover everything, right? Yeah. right? Prob and probably <clears throat> even in some states, it's against your state licensing yep. for whatever your shop is to have everything on one page with one signature. Yep. You usually have to have multiple pages with multiple different signatures. Yeah. With different si sometimes they're a small little piece of paper, sometimes mm -hmm. they're a full page, but Yes, and, and, and as a, a consumer, I don't know if consumers are watching this, always read the paperwork. You know, look through it. If you got a question, ask somebody. I don't sign anything unless my lawyer looks at it and says, yeah, I can defend that. I can get you out of that. Yeah. <laughs> you know. <laughs> well, and that's, and that's where when, when people get in trouble in these, these cases like this, I wind up, send me all your paperwork. And I get nothing but an authorization right, to repair. Right, exactly. Yeah, and that's <laughs> the thing. I mean, you think about it, it's an authorization to repair. So that only applies you to fix the car. repairing the vehicle. Right. Everything that may circle around the repair, whether it totals, whether it's storage, whether it's part return fees, whether it's all of that, may not be covered in an authorization to repair. So make sure that you have a signature on your contract. The second thing that you need to make sure you have is a signature on a release form. Now, that doesn't need to be the insurer's release form. So as an insurer, when I used to talk to a customer and call them and say, hey, your vehicle's a total loss, I would immediately shoot them an authorization to release. And it was really supposedly the insurer giving the shop permission to release the vehicle to me. Mm -hmm. Now that was going to be Copart or IA or whoever I sent. And that's great, but that doesn't work for me as a shop. I need my own authorization. I need my own permission from the insurer to do that. And the, really the secondary reason is not because I'm worried the insurer, the owner of the vehicle is going to call me and go, well, I didn't tell you to give them the car. I want to make sure that the owner of the vehicle is aware that they are responsible for all these fees. So even if they are somewhat settling with the insurer, they're transferring responsibility of the vehicle to the insurer, that they still need to know what they owe me and that's covered on the release form. Now, everybody tells me, but, but, but you know, Kristen, how do you get a signature? They're not there. There are so many wondrous things you can do through text messaging, um, whether it's, what is a, um, you know, we like to use our Remarkables with right, PDFs yes. and everything on them. But yeah, but DocuSign, DocuSign, I mean, there's all kinds, of, there's, all there's kinds the, of programs. There's even apps on the phone now yeah. that yeah. are built in. Yeah. You know, I think the last update with my iPhone, I think I had the ability to write on certain documents mm -hmm. by even taking a picture of it. Yeah. And it turns it into like a, 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 a scan of it, and I can yeah. actually sign yeah. it. But the D bigger question I have for you is, uh, and I know this is going to come up from people and stuff like that, I'm on a DRP. 
I don't oh, have I to worry about this stuff. Oh, I still got to worry about it. Yeah. <laughs> right, exactly. That's the problem. They think because they're on a DRP and, well, I don't charge storage or I can only charge a certain amount for storage. They don't realize they need the same paperwork as a non-DRP shop does for releasing forms because if something goes wrong, you're in trouble just as much as a shop that's not, yeah. you know, a, a DRP. And this is where this, this disconnect comes from that, you know, and we've had calls about the total loss class. Oh, mm -hmm. uh, 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 we're at the RP, we can't do that. No, you probably need this yeah. class. It's not about charging for it, it's paperwork. That's yeah. all it really and is. And well, there's, when there's one more thing that I ran into recently where the car came in, the guy said, you know, hey, my name's Joe Smith, and they sign it off and everything, but the registration of the car didn't match Joe Smith. Yeah. Yeah. So how do you, are, are you verifying that like the registration in the car matches the person or the you're dealing with? Or the son signing yeah. it, or the, exactly. or the, well, or the we, wife signs it for the husband, so. or husband's, and, and they're I'm, not, it's a separate policy, I'm that's the problem. I'm so glad you mentioned that because we cover that in the total loss class. Like, <laughs> what you're, what oh you're wait, in, there's more. <laughs> what your intake process should be. And why, so when we talk about an admin <laughs> fee and a sure. gate fee, those are two different things, right? And yes, what you me. should be doing when a vehicle comes in and, and what's wrapped up in that admin fee and part of it is vehicle verification of ownership. Yep. So. I got to make sure I'm getting my signatures. Okay, from I'll people. shut up and not teach that. No, no, you're fine. <laughs> Keep selling tickets, Mark. Keep selling tickets. But one thing that I want to make sure is always on my release form is a clarification of who's responsible for the fees to me. So mm -hmm. the customer is responsible for that. Now, if they've given the benefit of a third-party payee to pay me, that's fine. That could be an insurance company that wants to pay my fees or Copart or IA or somebody's going to pay my fees. But if someone cancels that check on me, there are some fees associated Which is with happening that. more. Yes. Yeah, and it's not, uh, there is not a meeting, I always get this question, there has not been a meeting in the hallowed halls of an insurer that says, hey, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go pick up cars and then cancel checks. That's not happening. The people no, no. In, the, in the top offices know that you're not supposed to do that. But when we have staffing issues and training issues and we give adjusters KPIs and say, hey, we really want you to hold down expenses, which is their job, that is what they are supposed to do, we sometimes make bad decisions for the right reasons in some ways. So well, take it off the insurance company. We've had customers in Cancel our last checks. total loss class. Sure. Uh, 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 Bob McSherry had said years and years ago, he had an mm -hmm. issue with somebody canceling a check mm -hmm. that was supposed to be sent, mm -hmm. and they sent it, and you have to listen to the insured or the claimant. You don't have to follow the direction of pay and actually pay the shop. So they canceled the check. The shop couldn't deposit the check. The customer got it, and they're like, oh no, the customer said they paid you. And that becomes an issue. And you have, unless you have the right paperwork, you yeah. can't go after that customer. Yeah. Because yeah. the judge is going to be like, well, if you got no signed paperwork and you gave back the call, why'd you do that? Yeah. <laughs> but you may want to make sure on your release form that you're adding some language in there now around canceled checks um, or what happens if a, can a check cancels, whether the customer check cancels it or the insurer cancels it. There are some fees um, and some service charges and some things that you're going to assign to somebody for that. Now, the reason we set that up is, is, Mark, you remember the old days when we used to train adjusters and actually send them to claim school and teach them. I can't do anything that puts my customer in harm's way or causes them a financial detriment. So I'm supposed to have these really high ethics. I'm supposed to do the right thing all the time. And when you, when you lay out the expectations in a contract, it then becomes very hard for an insurer to to cause that detriment and there not be some consequences right. on that. Now, your ability to protect your customer really lies in the paperwork that you do. The other thing that I want to send is a confirmation of charges letter or an email. Um, if it is a potentially or a, a particularly tenuous total loss, I might send that you're certified certified letter. Well, you're the smart guy. You really are. <laughs> you're gonna, I mean, you're gonna, I'm gonna have to Google that word. Right? I, don't even know. I didn't even use that word. That's like a Siri. nice syllable word. It's, it's Arkansas, and I'm wearing <laughs> shoes today, so don't ask me to do math. I thought it's all Kansas. Okay. No, it's Arkansas. <laughs> Arkansas. Yeah. It's a very Here's the problem. You're going to say, hey, Siri, and, you, and she's going to say, how do you spell oh. that? Oh, I actually got the new uh, 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 South African voice now. Oh. I think oh. they came up with a couple of voices. Yeah, it's pretty oh. cool. Yeah. That's awesome. It's so, so pleasant to hear. <laughs> okay, left turn here. <laughs> Make sure you're sending out your confirmation letters. That's just another way. I'll send those certified if I think it's a really, maybe the car's been here for two or three months. The charges are very high. I'll send certified in addition to email. But typically, it's just an email. It's going to the customer. It's going to the adjuster. And everybody just says, here are the charges. This is what we're owed. If anybody had questions or problems on that, this is their time to ask them, not three months later or, or a month mm -hmm. later or whatever. And then the last thing that we want to get is if this vehicle started as a repair and became a total loss in the process of either teardown, inspection, et cetera, you need the customer to sign the termination of repair document. Yep. So we need to sign that. And the reason we want that one right now is many of you are starting to see policies 
as you start to read through them, most everybody's looking for the right to appraisal clause, which we're covering later this, mm -hmm. later this week. Um, but you're starting to see limitations on total loss expenses. Yes. And so they'll say total loss fees and cannot exceed $1,500. There's a difference between the fees that are incurred when the vehicle's repairable mm -hmm. and the fees that are incurred when the vehicle's a total loss. So that termination of repair letter is becoming more and more valuable to have when you are getting ready to release a car. I think the times of the shop saying, oh, well, I don't total cause out, I fix cause, are kind of like over. The shop has to do its due diligence and say, hey, look, I really think this is a, a total loss. You might want to relook at this. No, no, keep on with the repair. Uh -huh. At least then you have the ability to say, the insurance company refused to total it. I'll go ahead. But right. I said, I think it's a total loss, but okay, I'll put it on the bench. I'll pull the motor out, but make a mess out and of this things, thing. And things just happen. I mean, salvage values are through the roof right now. I mean, and that's cars, are, cars are totaling yeah. when they, you know, when you just didn't think it should be, and it does. So uh, the next thing I have to do after I've thought about what are the forms that I need from the customer, I need to then go sit and look at my file and go, is all of my documentation ready? Once the car leaves the lot, there's things I can't do. So I want to sit down and I want to look at my file. Now you may decide in your shop to put a person in charge of total losses. And that may be the... Just like you would a DRP. Right. The yeah. estimator that's just like really attentive, good with detail. Mm -hmm. That person may be, hey, you're the total loss person. It may mm -hmm. be an admin in the office that's just like, hey, you're the total loss person. And they know what every file should have in it and they give it a good look over. First of all, all my email and communications, is my timeline solid? Um, my timeline being solid is part of my negotiation platform. If I have holes in the timeline, I can't negotiate as well as I can if I have a well put together timeline. So do I have that? Do I have all the photos I need or are photos missing? Um, Mark, Larry, how many times do you guys get an RTA or a lawsuit file and the shop sends you the, the whole case file and goes, yeah, but, but these photos are missing? It's all always. the time. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my favorite is, oh, we measured the car. Okay, give me the printout. Oh, it got accidentally uh, deleted. Uh, so everyone out there knows you can't accidentally delete uh, uh, um, you know, a measuring chart or a measuring printout from the system that you're on because it automatically saves and you got to hit it like three times to actually put it in your recycle bin. And well, you on can top still of go that, there. on top of that, you can, you can always take, and this is what I go, my printer's broken. I don't care. Is your camera? Yeah. <laughs> Picture the screen. Picture the screen. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there's always some sort of I know of your excuse. phone works because you're broken? calling me. Right, you're exactly. calling me on it. <laughs> so we're all in good shape. Let's FaceTime. <laughs> but if there's any photos I needed of, of showing, you know, for instance, let's say I took measures to protect the vehicle's interior from the from weather elements. Did I get the pictures of the crash wrap I needed? Do I have everything in the file that I need? Um, the next thing, were there any contents in the vehicle that I needed to secure, right? And if I did have to secure contents from the vehicle, did I document that process or document what I secured? Do I have my content form from my customer, which is another thing you can get from them? As uh, I bought a pair of diamond earrings one time when I had my <laughs> shop because they said, they said that when we cleared out the total loss, you know, we gave them a baggie and the diamond earrings weren't in there. I don't even think that, you know. Yeah. I didn't have it documented. It was back right. in the days of Polaroid, but. <laughs> right. Oh, I miss the Polaroid. <laughs> you were so much fun at parties when you had the Polaroid and that big brick of Polaroid film that they used to put in the trunk yeah. of your car. God, that was those days. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, vehicle security. So I want to make sure, have I taken um, care to look at the tags? Have we secured the tags? Have we taken them off the vehicle? If it's a vehicle that the tags follow the owner, not the car. Mm -hmm. um, have we cleared all the insured or the vehicle owner's data out of the car? Uh, that's a big thing nowadays with all these radios that are interact like basically the your iPhone or your your your, your uh, um, you know your iPad type of computer system that uh, everything syncs to the, the oh, radio yeah. and now you got everything in there you got past addresses home address phone you want all that stuff out of there yeah, who pays for all that uh, well the you know ultimately the, the customer <laughs> of the vehicle has to pay for well, it but and, uh, but how many shops are actually going well we need to clear your data it's going to cost this much money very I've, few I've only seen it once yeah very few are doing it's, it it's scary when you think about, and I got in a rental car not too long ago. Where were oh. we at? We were, we were in Connecticut because you no, drove. No, I drove to Connecticut. That was scary. Um, but um, I got in a rental scary. car, she lived and through somebody it. had, you I know, when you when stuff. you try to connect your phone, yeah. it'll ask you, do you want to sync your address book? Yeah. yeah. Um, and somebody had done that, and I'm looking through and going, I wonder who this person. I could have just hit call on whatever. Yeah. And then if you look at the notes people put on contacts in their phone. Some yeah. of it is passwords, some of it is, there's all kinds yes. of crazy stuff in there. Um, so you wanna clear out that data. We wanna make sure we've done it and we wanna confirm it because the last thing you wanna do is have an estimator or someone up front that goes through the fees. This mm -hmm. is, these are the fees we charge and you submit a fee bill, but then I get the car at Copart or IA or wherever it goes and then I find out you charged me for something you didn't do. Oh. So that's part of this 
We're making sure everything matches up. Parts confirmations, anything that you had to order, did it come in? Did you return it? If you returned it, was there a restocking fee? And that you have all the confirmations that you need. If you can't return it and it's going with the car, um, you'll want to give that to them. I'm going to tell you guys that I was having a conversation recently with an insurer's SIU manager. They love me. They like to talk a lot. Um, you know. <laughs> but um, they are seeing a, a large number of parts showing up on like eBay and Facebook Marketplace and a lot of these places where these parts were charged, either said they were returned um, and then or they were said that, um, that, that they went with the car on a total loss and now they're wondering if shops aren't or not shops, I don't want to say that, but sometimes you have people people that put parts for sale. So make sure that all your parts are together and then all accounted for. Oh, and document that they were actually <laughs> in the car when it left, maybe with a picture. Yeah. I don't, we must have said, Mike Anderson's calling. We said something that made him upset. We'll just hit the climb. <laughs> oh, Mike. we should have put him on. Uh, <laughs> should have put him on. <laughs> Mike, hey, you're Mike, on the Mike, show Mike, now. You're live. <laughs> Mike, you're live. You're on the show. No, no, get me off. Get me off. <laughs> I, no, no. Uh, all right. And then uh, I want to review my fees. So that's the other thing that I want to sit down and do very quickly. I want to look at everything that we said we've charged and that we're charging, and then I want to confirm that it's if, all been done and mm -hmm. I have. If you have a ton of R and I's on your, on your bill, when you're reviewing your fees and there's no underscore or star next to them, you probably want to go back over that again because most likely you didn't put the whole car back together. You didn't again. deny it. You are. Yeah. yeah. You are. Yeah. Yeah. You, yeah. you know. So you got to be careful we, of that. We talk about that in the total loss class a yeah. lot, and that I'm not a fan of it. I know a lot of shops like to do the double click everything, and then half the time, um, it's it makes for a very easy deposition. Yeah. Because I can, I can really pick you apart line by line. I'm just a big fan of, of tear down, right. four hours, five X, hours. Yeah. Just give me a, a line. Tear down, entry. disassembly. You know, may include the following components that were packed up in a yeah. box and given to the tow driver. I remember doing one uh, deposition one time when the shop had done all that, and they were like, "No, no, that's we we have the time." And I'm like, "Well, here's a picture of the vehicle leaving the accident scene and the bumper, yes. and everything's missing on the car. So mm. you definitely didn't, you know, remove yeah. that part. You didn't know it. Yeah, you might so hide it. <laughs> it was missing. <laughs> yeah, you didn't even have it. <laughs> um, the next thing that I want to do after I've got all my ducks in a row, right? I've got all my forms signed by the customer. I have reviewed my file and I've ensured that all my documentation is accurate. I can support every line item that I charged on that vehicle and that everything is confirmed." I now want to start going through what it's going to take to actually get this vehicle off my property. So there are three different scenarios for this. There are the, um, there's the customer's going to come get it, mm -hmm. which happens a lot on maybe it's an owner retained total loss or um, they've been told to move it to, to for no storage or whatever. Or whatever. Yeah. Um, it may be that it's going actually to a salvage yard. Typically there's two companies left that do that yeah. in our industry. Or the third option is, is that sometimes a vehicle leaves your property because an insurer sends another body shop to get it. Mm -hmm. um, so those DRPs that are holding cars for free sometimes get told to go come, get a, come get a car from you. So anytime a vehicle rolls off the lot, I now have to start thinking about well, what's the process for that, the person I'm actually going to release care, custody, and control of that vehicle to. So what forms might I want for that? I need a confirmation of payment. So I want to have some sort of form that the person that picks up the car signs and says, I am paying you this amount for these charges that had been approved and authorized. It then becomes really hard to cancel payment on mm -hmm. something that's been approved and authorized. Um, number two, confirmation of parts. So if any parts need to go with this car, um, I bought parts that are non-returnable, whatever, and they're going to take them with them, then I'm just going to stack them up next to the car, and I'm going to make them sign that they did receive all of them, and I'm going to let them load them. Um, I'm getting a lot of calls lately where the the car gets to the facility it's and about bad. a week later the insurer calls the shop back and goes well the, none of these parts were with the car you owe us money back um, well your tow driver didn't want to take it yeah. i've had that said before they just he didn't want to take it he says he's not putting it on the back of the tow truck no because he has no way of securing it so he's not putting a hood fenders boxes and so i have no way of securing that it's a flatbed yeah. mm -hmm. or i got it on the back of the the, the you know the the, the wheel lift mm -hmm. and i i got no place to secure this stuff so i'm leaving it mm -hmm. Well, he, obviously he doesn't care, but the insurance company does, and then the shop yeah, just yeah. kind of like forgets to call up and say, hey, Mr. So-and-so insurance adjuster, or even the, the adjuster they deal with. They wouldn't claim. grab this. It's like, look, they he refused to take it. You want to send somebody to come and get it? Yeah. Well, no, no, we don't want them. All right, send me an email right. that says you don't want uh, these. Can you send that to me in writing? Yeah, yeah, send it to me in writing. That's all I want. <laughs> 
Uh, and I mean, the parts with the car really do help my salvage value. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, they are difficult for the salvage yard to maintain and keep up with, but they do help me get a higher return on well, it. Well, the so biggest thing I've said to shops is, you know, before you start cutting a car apart, and you know it's a total loss, send it to the insurance company, look, if I start cutting this car apart on top of the frame machine, you're gonna have a non-sellable car sitting at the yard. You know, I cut out the so. B pillar and the rocket pound. Nobody's going to want this car. Currently, it's a driver. It'll be a non-drive. Yeah. I'll yeah. put the yeah. doors back on, and then they can put a picture up on their site that says, easy fix, we have parts. And <laughs> you could just do something like that, even though it needs a complete side. But, but, but you said it back. Now. <laughs> but wait, act wait, now. Act now. Yeah. Well, then we'll be doing a video like Arthur. <laughs> yeah. Remember, remember years ago, they used to have the light strippers? You know, it's a light stripper. We have parts. It's like, it's got no wheels, no engine, no doors on it. What do you mean light stripper? <laughs> okay, I, I totally didn't know where you were going with that. <laughs> so that, that was famous back in the Kristen, day. Kristen, we're talking cars. Cars, just, just saying. It's Larry, Mark. I know, it's I know. It's Larry. Yeah, Could go either way. Uh, Could as either everyone way. knows, I've never screwed up a video scene, and I've never screwed up a mm. live video. No, never screwed it up. Mm. You, on the other hand, and we had somebody else that also said naughty words mm. on one of our live shows. I miss Doug. <laughs> yes. He needs to come back to the collision industry. <laughs> <sighs> I was like, Doug said it, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> oh. All right, so we're going to confirm those parts. And basically, <laughs> I just want the tow truck driver to confirm that he's received them. Yes. He's been shown them. They're all there. Take a picture of him putting it on the truck. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, we do that he too. He took the right. parts. No, 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 he sold them. <laughs> yeah. Not my problem. And then I want the driver to confirm condition. Now, the reason I don't load parts is if you ever watched a tow truck driver try to load a hood, and they're shoving it in the back seat mm -hmm. or whatever. If they're ripping interior door Pulling trim panels, seats, <laughs> any of that stuff, when when somebody calls me back and goes, "Hey, this car now has interior damage that wasn't there in the accident," I go, "Great, you should talk to your tow truck driver." Mm -hmm. You know, so and then I, that way they sign off on the condition of the car and it's all good. If I get that call back, then I've got my file to say, "No, no, no," and it's not a he said, she said, two different. Um, were we able to find the forms? We have our forms for the. Um, um, inside our VIP groups, inside our leadership groups, um, the forms are there. Um, if you need some help finding or creating, a lot of these forms are general on the internet. Um, they're like general forms for rental car companies, um, et cetera. And then you can um, modify them a little bit, but if you need some help, you can always reach out. And if out. you take the class, you get the forms in an email yeah. after taking the total loss class, but they're all yeah. part of the VIP Yeah, I've group. been modifying the forms lately just because of the canceled check things becoming more and more of a big deal, so I'm having to add I'm having to add lines. I didn't have to this lie before. Great. This is one of my favorites. But um, all right, so now I've gotten all of the forms for the pickup driver. So I'm going to prepare for that pickup. And I need to make sure that the vehicle is secure and staged. So for some of us, our parking lots are tight. Where we put cars are tight. Where we especially put total losses so that they stay out of our way. I may need to stage that car for pickup. I may not want the tow truck driver that is, you know, hired by this pickup company coming on my lot and just driving around and getting the car on there any way they see fit. So I may have to do some staging. I may have some parts that I need to gather and parts carts that I need to put next to that car so that it's all there for them to do. There's a labor fee for that, uh, for pickup. And then I want to supervise the loading process. Mm -hmm. And I know that that's, everybody's like, God, Christian, we're so busy, we got so much to do. Whether it's your porter or your detailer or somebody, they just need to watch that process happen. Or videotape it. Video yeah. it. But when something starts going squirrely, which you know can always happen with a tow truck driver, um, I've got pictures and video to show that we weren't the ones that did that. I definitely, by supervising the loading process, you minimize damage to other cars on your lot. I watched a, a video recently sent to me that somebody showed a picture, somebody put it on their Instagram, of them jockeying or jiggling a Tesla off. <laughs> the, the, the flatbed because they didn't have keys for it and they jiggled it off and stuff and you're watching the wheels and everything wow. turn and stuff wow. and it's just jiggling along and stuff like that. It's like, and you put that on your website. That's not really right. <laughs> but, you know, that, that could have been something. So if they would have called up the shop and says, hey, you guys, you know, did this or you watch the car get dragged up with no dollies and it just got dragged up and you're watching the wheels fight because mm -hmm. the transmission's in park. Well, that's a good video to show. Say, hey, well, you screwed up the transmission. Screwed up. Well, no, here, here's your tow here's driver your dragging this thing up with no dollies on it. Mm -hmm. That's that guy. And that's where that, you know, it doesn't become a problem until it is a problem. Mm -hmm. I never have enough time to protect myself, but I have enough time to pay for lawyers and pay It's just fees. an insurance policy. That's yep. all it is. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, so the thing is, we're having a hard time finding technicians, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody in the country is having a hard time finding skilled labor, and the towing industry is... Is no, is no different. I've had a lot of people show up with a sling truck. I've had some people that have been um, have been commissioned by one of the two major salvage companies to come pick up a car, and it's a truck with a flatbed trailer. Yeah. Um, it, you know, so some things show up, and, and years you're ago like, they used huh. to have their own drivers. Now they stopped that, and yeah. they're hiring. In, I mean, we had one guy show up one time with a little baby 
you know, small sling, which is what we call chase trucks. You know, the, the, the pickup truck with the arm that comes out of the back of the bed. And it just picks up and literally drags the car. It's like, what is this? You can't take this That's car. a New York thing now. Yeah. <laughs> they don't well, use Philly. those anymore. Yeah. yeah. But in the New city, Philly, you need yeah. that, that city, compact. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But, I mean, I'm, I've had some crazy things show up at the shop. And so I definitely always want to supervise that loading process and take the film and pictures, anything that I need that protects mm -hmm. myself. And once I've got all that ready to go, they're ready to come get the car, right? Um, now, once that car starts to roll off my lot and I'm waving by to the taillights, I'm not done yet. I've still got some things that I have to do. That's, oh my God, that's bad. Yeah. <laughs> but we got video of it pulling out. So, I mean, that helps, right? I mean, listen, yeah, you can tell it's a rear wheel drive car. Well, it may be all wheel drive, but it may be a rear wheel drive car, fine and dandy, but the wheel you could see is turned. It's which just is, a Bentley. That's uh. a, I don't care about the car. <laughs> it's the fact that the wheels are turned. As this guy goes down the block, this thing's going to be doing this, yeah. slapping into cars. <laughs> now, as soon as that thing starts to leave and I'm waving by to the tail lights, I'm going to send a confirmation email to the adjuster last confirm you know the last adjuster that I communicated with and the customer that says your vehicle has been picked up today X amount of fees have been paid on your behalf and I either will have a balance owed or I'll be paid in full um, but it's good that's going to be in that email and if I have any problems with the pickup mm -hmm. then I would share that with the customer at this time I would be like hey this happened during pickup I had one one time where it obviously got damaged in pickup because thank God the shop had the four corners photos but by the time it got to the total loss unit at the storage facility, they were like, oh, your vehicle had prior damage and we're going to deduct money from your settlement. So um, having the videos and photos of, of all that can help the customer out as well. If I have to take any extra videos and photos, I'm going to save those immediately. Um, I think everyone should have a video camera where your tow companies come into your yard or, you know, at least facing the front like in New York City we don't it's have big and yards it's just, and it's just always so have on. it outside so yeah. when the car does come in take a snapshot of that saying here here's the car in the back of the flatbed this is what it looked like right so don't tell me that something else happened to it or it gets onto your lot there's a video at least of you know trucks coming in out of the lot and stuff like that not so much for security purposes but for the purpose of this is what it looked like when it came in in the back of the flatbed not when it got off the flatbed you know because not always do you have time to run outside and take yeah. pictures a lot of times they drop they walk in here's the keys here's the paperwork <laughs> they're out. It's like yeah what are you talking about here yeah. the <laughs> sign because the sign at the thing it says do not enter until you see the office first and the guy's just i'm just driving in well i saw the office <laughs> yeah, I, saw, I saw the office <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't say come inside and talk yes. to somebody it says see the office so and then the very last thing that's becoming very very important deposit any funds you receive on same day right away um don't save those deposits till friday or whatever make sure that you're making those daily bank runs and and that becomes the definition of a financial detriment um if i haven't deposited then i didn't have a detriment and i couldn't get a I couldn't get my fees and my other things that come from that. So make sure you're depositing um, the funds pretty immediately. And, and again, we cover that in the full length total loss class. I talk about this more in depth about the things that we have to do to secure our protection, but pros also and cons of photo deposit versus actual yeah. paper deposit. <laughs> yeah. Um, but we'll talk about it. So a different one class. Of, one yes. of the things that you, we want to do is we want to get those funds in the bank right away that same day. And we want to be able to say if we're asked at 8 a.m. the next morning, no, I'm sorry, those funds have already been convert, converted. Mm -hmm. There's been conversion of those funds already. They've been put in my bank. Um, so that's pretty simple with total losses. Um, there's a lot that's going to be changing with them. I do anticipate total losses to become one of the major focuses of the insurers this year. I mean, if, if I had to go put that hat back on and sit back up at corporate, there are a thousand things affecting my profitability as an insurer. And that's one big one. And there are very, I can't, I can't influence them all. So I have to pick one or two big rocks that I want to focus on for the rest of this year and going into 2023. Mm -hmm. And total losses is going to be one of the big ones. If, if, it, if it wasn't just me guessing, uh, when we look at the agendas right now for industry events, CSC is talking about total losses. Mm -hmm. um, when we look at the agenda for the claims conference, which is in May in New Orleans for the insurance companies. Total losses is on that agenda. That? I think so. Okay, good. We'll I think we're gonna hang up. We'll get some beignets, some coffee. We'll walk around. <laughs> you gonna have a booth? Um, you think have a about booth. it. <laughs> yes, we'll have a booth. Yeah, I don't know. I, th I think everybody would love to see me. <laughs> I, I just, I just do. But um, I feel an arrest coming on. <laughs> but when you look at the agendas of the conferences and things going forward, even on the uh, what I like to call the insurer tech, which everybody knows how I feel about insurer tech these days. But even their stuff right now isn't so much about artificial intelligence and how it relates to estimating as much as it how much it can do for processing total losses. So okay. 
early first notice of loss, how quickly can we identify a total and Get cut done. cycle time? So yep. it's going to be a big rock for discussion. Now, we have a jam-packed day. Yep. We have a jam-packed three days, and we're, we're going till about 8 o'clock every night. So we wanted to make sure we had some evening classes where technicians and some other people could join in with us. Um, but we're going to be back here at 1030. Mm -hmm. um, so in just about an hour, we'll be live again from St. Paul, Minnesota. So beaming in from St. Paul, Minnesota, Sean Collins. And if you've seen Sean present before, he is a wealth of information. He is a fantastic technician um, that is now a, a service or a product engineer at mm -hmm. 3M. Um, and we're going to talk about OEM repair requirements around materials. So when an OE specifically calls out a material, what does that mean? And when an OE says OE equivalent in the procedures, well, then what does that mean? Because that's where people get get confused a lot of times and a vendor or your your jobber might come in and go well this is this is an equivalent well how do you really know, do you know? <laughs> what's exactly. an equivalent versus right. what the jobbers just pushing that week to sell you so we're going to answer some of those questions at 10 30 jason and sean are going to take it through us so you and i we get a break a oh, bit cool. for boys all right so he'll take over well we will see you back at 10 30 live on facebook or on youtube the world's Thanks, fair <laughs>